Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. It's time to take a look at the new iMac from Apple. I'm excited to check this out. This is actually the first iMac I've used in a really long time. And this time around, Apple's decided to go with a bunch of different colors. As you guys know, my favorite color is blue, so went with the blue color. I did also buy the new Apple TV 4K, so I'll make a video on this very soon. Be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified when that goes live. But for now, it's time to take a look at this new iMac with Apple's new M1 chip. Let's get started. So here is the new iMac from Apple. Want to make note on the top, the handle is actually color-coded based on the color you buy. Kind of a nice touch. Here is the new iMac. Let's get it unboxed, take a look at what comes inside, and set it up. As we open it, it says hello and says to push these out, which reveals the base of our iMac. I set the iMac to the side, pretty surprised how light it was as a first impression, but now let's see what else we get. There's our Magic Keyboard with Touch ID built in, Magic Mouse, and others. First up, here is that Magic Keyboard that comes with it. Taking it out of the packaging, super light, very portable, really thin, uh, no bezels whatsoever on this keyboard, and unfortunately charged via lightning connection. Next should be our included mouse. They pretty much have to include a keyboard and mouse in a desktop because how else are you going to control the computer if they don't? So here is that magic mouse, the coloring of it matching whatever color it is that you actually order it with a couple different clicks. Very clean looking, but again, charged via that lightning connection at the bottom, so you can't really charge it while you use it. Uh, not very innovative in my opinion, but because of those lightning connections, they include a styled lightning uh, cable, which is USB-C to lightning. Again, very confusing. I just wish Apple would go all USB-C, but uh, they want to kind of pump out these USB-C to lightning cables for some reason. It's nice that it does come with a specific color though. Next up, probably what I should have started with, designed by Apple in California, is our standard booklets and a couple different stickers. Kind of nice, they included multicolored stickers. That's what the back coloring is going to look like, and that is what the front's going to look like. All right, and finally, in the box, you have your charging brick, has an Apple logo there on both sides, and then a connection for the wall outlet cable setting that to the side also worth noting you have an ethernet port in this brick which i'm totally okay with if they wanted to remove it and add it to the charging brick that is totally fine with me this is not detachable it comes with this cable and this cable is color coordinated i love that apple did this actually uh, especially with the color uh, contrast between that darker and lighter blue you don't see any other manufacturers doing this. Just customizing even the charging cable for the specific desktop that you're buying, you're not gonna see that anywhere else. All right, on to what you came to see. There's the back. Like I said, this is really light and thin. I'm fairly surprised. Let's take off this wrapping. So on the iMac, there is some packaging. Let's peel that off. Very satisfying. I do really like this blue color on the back. The Apple logo is a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be, but the blues do contrast fairly well. And finally, on the front. There is that 24-inch display and that bottom bezel that has a color to it, so that lighter blue is on the front. So before we turn this on and set up the iMac, let's take a look at the hardware. So on the back four USB Type-C ports, two of them being Thunderbolt. And moving over towards the center is where that power cable is going to go, and there is a backspace for more cable management, so you can route cables from those USB-C ports through this space. And finally on the back is the power button. So I'm going to plug in this iMac and we are gonna run through the startup process. I'll talk about anything noteworthy. And just a couple quick notes about the power cable. Really cool attention to detail with the different accents in the blue. You'll see there's even a different blue on the inside of the power cable. 
just kind of a nice touch of detail. And when it comes to plugging it into the back, it doesn't matter which direction you actually plug it in. You can spin it around. It doesn't matter. And then when you put it near it, there are magnets. So it kind of snaps in and you push it in place. And it is a very strong magnet. I wouldn't worry about it actually coming out or being accidentally pulled out if you trip it. You can actually give it a little bit of force and it will come out. Also quickly want to make note on the left side of the iMac is a headphone jack right there. Actually kind of surprised they included it. Happy that they did. Uh, also just make note of the really cool design when you're looking at it from the side the side profile. This is a really good looking desktop. Now I like the design on the back. I like the side profile it has. When it comes to the front, I'm a little torn. I would have liked to have seen smaller bezels on the sides and that bottom chin just seems like it doesn't need to be that thick. But overall, just a different looking desktop. One that you'd probably want to have out in the open. I think that's Apple's goal, especially with the different colors to kind of add to a room. So we've got our iMac plugged in. Let's power it on for the first time. Pretty easy to find that power button. There is that Apple startup animation and that old school sound. So we are on the start screen. I wanna make note that I did just turn the mouse on and it is already synced up. I can start using it. So I'm going to run through this startup process and talk about anything that is noteworthy. Worth noting, you do have the choice between light and dark mode and also you can choose auto so it will determine for you if it should be on light or dark mode easy enough with apple's migration assistant i'm going to transfer from my m1 macbook pro and transfer my data onto this imac with this imac apple gives you the option to set up touch id on your keyboard that comes with it it's built in which was connected just like the mouse right away so let's actually set touch id up it uh, placing our finger. This is a button as well for the Touch ID. So I believe you can just power on your iMac via this button and then unlock it or make purchases online. It does kind of tie you to this keyboard. Unfortunately, hopefully there's more that come out that have Touch ID built in. All right, our iMac is all set up and ready to go. Looks like it did come with a custom style wallpaper. I'm guessing with whatever color that you chose to buy. So switch the wallpaper for the sake of the camera, but here is that 4.5K Retina display. Overall, really impressed as an initial impression. A little interesting, they decided to go with a 24-inch display. I kind of was thinking they were gonna choose a 27-inch display, but I guess not. Maybe in a future model, they will upgrade it and have a larger display, maybe once they come out with a new M1 chip. Up at the top, they also have that webcam, and right above it is actually a couple microphones, so you can use video calls without any headset whatsoever because there's microphones built into the iMac. Going to About Mac, running Mac OS Big Sur out of the box, iMac 24 inch M1 2021 uh, with 16 gigs of RAM. Now going over to displays, the resolution of it, like I said, 4.5K, 4480 by 2520, 24 inch display. And when I go to storage, 1.93 terabytes out of the available two terabytes. So after migration, you'll see my apps are showing up at the bottom. I've got Discord, Final Cut Pro, which I do use my Mac to edit most of my videos overall. Now that's just about it for now. I'm actually going to shut down this iMac. And once it shuts down, I'm going to power it on from the keyboard and then log in with my fingerprint. So I'm just going to keep talking. So that's it for now on the 2021 iMac. Drop a comment though and let me know what you wanna see in upcoming videos. I will do future, future videos, a full review, and then maybe even like a setup, adding new accessories to it and a new desk setup. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that it is off by now. So I'm gonna press the button with my finger on the fingerprint scanner, obviously, that I did register and see if that actually does boot it up. I'm not sure if shutting it down, it will work. I might have to actually press the power button. I just wasn't positive when it came to that. It doesn't seem like it's working. So I might have to actually press the power button on the back left of the iMac. Okay, there is that animation with that noise. So it does seem like once it's shut down, uh, I'll let it boot up. We can see how quickly it boots up from, from shut down now. And then I'll put it back to sleep and see if the keyboard will actually um, unlock it or turn it back on once it's in sleep. I do have to type in my password though. 
All right, let's do this one more time. Just doing some testing. So now I'm putting it to sleep. And once it's asleep, let's see if we can use the keyboard. Okay, so pressing the button and using my finger, look at that, that was super quick. So that's as expected, but that is when you put it to sleep. So if it's completely shut down, you've gotta use the button on the back of the iMac, otherwise you can go with that keyboard. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to click that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.